everyone, Live It Like Lisa here. And in today's video, I will be doing wall decor signs for our theatre room. Our theatre room is pretty much nearly done. Like, all we really have to do is put these signs up and do put the install the light fitting and it's completed so we can finally show you what our theater room looks like but today in this video i am going to be showing you how to do or how to create some quick signs that you can use as wall decor in your theater room okay so the first one that we're going to be creating is this big one and this is going to go above the tv in the theater room and we're going to have now showing going across the board and have a, like a little border going around it and yeah, decorate it. This is going to be super, super easy. And I'm going to paint this one in some white chalk paint first and go from there. So I'm sure most of you know this already by now if you've watched any of my videos, but I like to use my own homemade chalk paint and for those that haven't seen any of my videos before I will leave a link in the description box below of another video where it describes how to make your own chalk paint. So I ended up giving this about two or three coats till it was fully coated. Okay so I didn't actually use my Cricut for this sign because I wanted this sign to look a little bit more vintagey and worn so what I've actually done is just gone on my computer and printed off the letters of now showing in a font that I liked. This one I think is called Algerian, something like that. I'll put the name of the font in the description box below as well. I love using this one. It's just very simple but quite nice. So now I'm just going in and cutting out a little bit closer to the letters. So it doesn't have to be too detailed because we are going to sand over these letters. So what we're going to do next is just glue them onto the board using some regular PVA glue. So you just got to make sure that you get your letters reasonably straight, as straight as you can, that they're in a straight line and evenly spaced. And I, I did start measuring it, but towards the end, I just kind of eyeballed it. One little tip I did have is if I was doing this again, I wouldn't cut out the spaces in between the letters. So see with the end that I'm doing now, I cut up into the end. I would actually leave that with the paper still intact, similar to the W next to it at the bottom. I would leave them pretty intact. It's just a lot easier to glue them on when they're not, when they're a full piece of paper rather than little arms and legs trying to get them on straight. Because uh, it doesn't matter. We're going to be sanding it away later anyway. So it's not like you're going to notice that the inside part has not been cut away. It's not going to look any different by the time we're finished. So yeah, just my little tip, keep the whole letter intact. Don't cut away any of the inner bits of the letter and it'll be a lot easier to glue it on. So once I've stuck the letters on, I then go over the top of them again with some more PVA glue just to help protect them a little bit. Okay, so next I'm just going to mark out my border. I think from memory I did about maybe three, four centimeter border around the whole frame and we're going to be painting this border in black. And I'm just using a little bit of painter's tape to tape around the border to help protect it when I go in with the black paint. So what we're going to do now is using some sandpaper, we're going to start distressing the letters. So what this is going to do, it's not only going to help remove some of that excess glue that you can see around the letters, but we're also going to pick up all of the paper that is in between the letter pieces. So here you can see in between the O, we're going to actually sand out the excess paper and we're going to sand around the edges of all the letters and make them look a little bit distressed and a little bit old looking. So that's why I said at the start it's not necessary 
not necessary to remove all of the um, bits of paper in between the letters like you know in all the little crevices because we'll be sanding those off later and it just adds to the age and the the vintage vibe I want to try and achieve with this sign so while I'm sanding the letters it doesn't matter if bits of the letter peels off or sands off that all adds to the look and to the aging of this sign so where you can see excess glue you can just use the sand block to sand those off as well and I'm just using a little piece of sandpaper here it's going super fast but yeah I just ball up a little piece of sandpaper to get in between the edges of those letters as well so next what I'm going in with is I'm getting a little bit of like a beige colored paint and mixing it with a little bit of white just to uh, lighten it up a little bit and I'm just doing a very very light dry brush over the white of the sign now I'm not concerned if it gets on the black I'm not concerned if it gets on top of the letters it's just a very light dry brushing just to give a little bit of texture to the sign and then we will be going over this with some white afterwards anyway so you can see here now I'm just going over that dry brush with a little bit of white paint on my brush and kind of blending it all in just sort of yeah smoothing it out and blending it in just so those dry brush strokes are not so obvious uh, I just wanted to give this like an aged look so I didn't want the white looking so stark white and yeah uh, that's all I'm basically doing is just blending blending the beige blending the white and just giving it a bit more of a dirty look and a little bit of texture here and there so there's no real <laughs> technique to it I was just looking at how it like what it was looking like and where, where I wanted it to sort of have a bit of shadow and have a bit of depth and yeah just adding a bit of paint here and there <laughs> Okay, so next I'm going in with a little paint sponge it's a small circular sponge and I'm just using my white paint and just making some little white dots all around the edge of the frame now guys here's the finished sign I am super happy with the way this has turned out it's exactly how I pictured it in my head how I wanted it to look and I mean that's always a good thing when what the vision you had in your head is how it's turned out you're always on to a good start so uh, what I also did I'll just show you a close-up here is I really distressed all the edges of the sign as well just to give it that vintage feel and that really worn feel and I also went over it after it was finished just with a tiny bit of black very lightly and just did a bit of dry brushing over all the letters in black as well and you can see here how the sandpaper has removed all the insides of the O like the excess paper inside the O and in between all the other letters and it just helped 
to blend it really into the sign as well. So yeah, I'm really happy with the way these letters look actually. And I think it's given it that really uh, vintage sort of look to it, like it's a, an actual sign that's been worn over years. <laughs> But yeah, so this is actually going to be going up above our TV in our theatre room and I will show you what it looks like. I'll give you a little sneak peek of it um, on the wall in our theatre room after this. So yeah, super easy guys, not, not a hard project at all. You don't need any fancy tools. And here it is above our TV. I don't want to give too much away in our theatre room because I'll be doing a bit of a reveal hopefully on the weekend and you'll see the whole room then. But yeah, really happy with that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and I will see you in my next one. Thanks for watching.